Good afternoon, Father Peter Damien from St. Paul the Apostle here, continuing our reading of uh, Pope Paul VI Gaudete in Domino, uh, his uh, apostolic exhortation on Christian joy. I will wait a couple of minutes until uh, others can join me. It is Our Lady of Fatima today, and uh, it is... Uh, is a beautiful Marian uh, celebration in this month of May, uh, month of the Rosary, month of Mary, and uh, I hope uh, I hope you you are rediscovering the beauty of the Rosary and praying it in your families. I strongly encourage you to do so. Um, Pope Francis, uh, before the month of May, has asked all Catholics to to pray this beautiful prayer, uh, especially in the families. So. Um, Today on this uh, feast day of Our Lady of Fatima, um, we, uh, we're used to, to uh, crowning the Blessed Mother, images of the Blessed Mother, and uh, of course in normal times we would do that at church and, uh, or, or outside, depending on where we have a, a beautiful statue of Our Lady. And um, we're trying to come up with, uh, with a solution a little later in the month uh, to do that. Uh, um, here at St. Paul's, uh, with all the, with all the um, uh, social distancing and the norms that we have to abide by, uh, we're we're, uh, we're 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 hoping to uh, to find the right way, and we will let you know as soon as we know that. So welcome, welcome, Marianne Rose. Um, read that Riva said just finished the rosary today. So wonderful, that is wonderful. Please keep me in your prayers as well. Okay. Uh, we need uh, we need we need your prayers for strength and for uh, for wisdom um, going forward. So uh, I will start today uh, with a prayer, uh, which is the prayer of the Mass of today uh, to Our Lady of Fatima, and um, and um, and conclude with uh, with the noon prayer, Regina Celli. So. As you know, the Blessed Mother appeared for the first time to three Portuguese shepherd children on this date in 1917. Europe was in the grips of the First World War, which would claim an astounding 37 million lives. Only eight days before the apparition, Pope Benedict XV had begged the Blessed Mother to intercede for the war's end. During the appearances, Mary predicted the devastation of World War II and the grave threat posed by communist Russia. Her, her message to the children and to the world, reform your lives and do penance for, for your sins. Pray the rosary every day. So we welcome these invitations of the Blessed Mother and, uh, and, and, and try to live them um, ourselves, right? Um, and while well, we pray for the whole world. Um, it is, um, to me, the, these apparitions of the Blessed Mother, like the, the, the apparitions of Fatima or Lourdes or Medjugorje, for those who believe um, in those apparitions, have always been a strong confirmation of God's presence with us. You know, the Blessed Mother is a true mother and she's present with us. She's present in our history. That's, um, that's one of the, the fact that there are prophecies um, and, and made in these apparitions. It is a sign that God is in control that what is going on in the world, um, it is that God is in control, uh, even when we, we struggle to see that. So it is a, a strong reminder of, of, of God being, uh, being in control and um, of the importance for us to turn towards Him. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who chose the mother of your Son to be our mother also, Grant us that, persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may further more effectively each day the reign of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So, wonderful. So, we will continue today our reading of Gaudete in Domino on Christian joy. I don't know if you have a printed text or you're using just uh, um, the link excuse me, that I posted in the description of, of this video, um, which, is, um, which is on the Vatican website. And unfortunately, with, with this, uh, with the older um, uh, um, documents of, of letters of popes, um, it's, 
they're not well divided um, uh, by paragraphs in the way we were used. We have been used at least since uh, John Paul II. So it's a little harder to say which page I am reading from. Um, that's, that's a little confusing, but uh, I will indicate to you that I'm reading from section three, and that's joy in the New Testament. And yesterday I read the first three paragraphs of that. Um, how um, um, that's um, uh, referencing uh, joy according to the New Testament. Um, the joy of Israel, the Incarnation, the Blessed Virgin Mary, uh, John the Baptist. Um, and yesterday, a good part of, um, yes, actually not yesterday, it was on Monday. Well, what I talked about was, was uh, the joy of Jesus during his earthly life. And, and how the insistence on those human joys that Jesus had and, and, and enjoyed. Um, and that's, um, that's how, the encycl how, how this apostolic letter starts, by talking about, about um, the human joys um, and how, how important they are. And then building upon that, the joys that come from, um, from the relationship with God, the joy of faith. So today I'm going to continue to read about Jesus's joy and going into, into the deeper joy that is the spiritual joy of Jesus, okay? So I'm reading from the one, two, three, fourth paragraph, starting with, but it, but it is necessary. So that's where I ask you to, to please follow with me. So... Um, but it is necessary here below to understand properly the secret of unfathomable joy, which dwells in Jesus and which is special to him. So what's the secret of Jesus's joy? This is where we, what, what we're going to talk about today. It is especially the gospel of St. John that lifts the veil by giving us the intimate words of the Son of God made man. So, the Gospel of John is, uh, is unique among the four Gospels. Um, we call the three other Gospels, uh, the Gospel of um, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Synoptic Gospels, because they, they, there, there, are some, there, are some, there are a lot of common patterns about them, and, and um, they're very similar in many respects. They have slight differences, um, kind of different views on the, on the same events, but, um, but the gospel according to John is, um, is, is a different, uh, a very different from the other three. And, and you can see that already from the beginning. Um, and probably also from the fact that the apostle, um, the apostle and evangelist John had a special relationship with, with Jesus. Um, uh, we, we, we read that, um, that Jesus would have among, among the apostles, we have three, and one of them was, was John, um, that, that, that Jesus was closer to. And in the Last Supper, we read that John was reclining his head um, on, the, on, on Jesus' uh, chest. So um, he was uh, closer to his heart. And... Um, and John was also under the cross with Mary. Uh, John was the one who heard those words from Jesus on the cross. Um, um, son, this is your mother. Um, mother, this is your son. Um, so there, there, there's something special about the apostle and evangelist John and also his gospel. His gospel is, all, all gospels are also an interpretation um, of, of the faith, and, um, and, and, and the gospel according to John is even more so. It is a contemplation of, of the faith. Um, and and just, um, just read the, the, first, the first chapter, and you know what I mean. Uh, it, is a, um, it is a deep theological reflection on the mystery of Christ. So this is the gospel uh, from which, um, from which uh, Paul VI is, is drawing some, some of the reflections that he's making here. So he says, what's the secret of unspeakable joy which dwells in Jesus and is so special to him? It is in the gospel of St. John that it is the gospel of St. John that lifts the veil by giving us the intimate words of the Son of God made man. If Jesus radiates such peace, such assurance, such happiness, 
such availability, it is by reason of the inexpressible love by which he knows that he is loved by his Father. So here's the answer to the secret of Jesus' unspeakable joy. It is that he knows that he is loved by his Father. Loved by his Father. That's the focus, okay? When he is baptized on the banks of the Jordan, this love, which is present from the first moment of his incarnation, is manifested. You are my son, the beloved. My favor rests on you. The beloved, loved by his father. So just, just pause and dwell a little bit on that. Think about, about the human experience of being loved. What does, it, what, does it, what does it bring to your heart? What does it bring to your mind? Doesn't being loved, feeling loved, knowing actually that you are loved, not just feeling, right? Sometimes we may not even feel it, but we know it deep down. So just that, that, that deep knowledge of being loved, doesn't it bring you peace, um, happiness? joy, availability, right? And it is, even, it is so even more when you know that you are radically loved by the Father. And that was Jesus' love, Jesus' joy. You are my son. You are my, you are my beloved, right? Beloved, my son, okay? So there's relationship, there's intimacy, there's, there's radical love, eternal love right there. So that is, um, that is what, what um, Pope Paul VI points as the secret to Jesus' joy. This certitude is inseparable from the consciousness of Jesus. And, and, and he, he goes like, what is this consciousness of Jesus, right? What is this being loved like? Um, and, and here, here are a couple of, a couple of um, um, expressions of that. So he says, it is a presence which never leaves him alone. So this certitude, this knowledge of being loved and beloved, the beloved of, of the Father, that is a presence which never leaves him al all alone. So Jesus never felt alone because he always felt the Father was with him. There was that this, this deep knowledge, interior knowledge. Think about us when we feel alone, when we feel how important it is that, that we remember that we are never truly alone and that, and that, that we are beloved. You're, you're the Father's beloved daughter. You're the Father's beloved son. It is... He says, it is an intimate knowledge which fills him. The Father knows me, and I know the Father. Now, so it is a knowledge, right? He says, the Father knows me, and I know the Father. But what to notice here is that, well, well for us um, who are um, debtors to the, um, to the Greek, Greek and Roman culture, um, knowledge, gnosis in, in, in Greek, um, um, scientia in, or conoscentia in Latin. So this knowledge we associated with, uh, with the mind, with the mental knowledge. But for Jews, it was not so. For Jews, it was the, cent the heart. The heart was the center of, of knowledge. Kind of the heart is the central organ of the human being. So... Um, so that knowledge is actually another way to say love. Um, knowledge in a biblical way, it is associated with love and, uh, and concrete love, right? Um, sometimes the nuptial love, it is expressed, um, um, and physical love is expressed with that word to know. So... The Father knows me, and I know the Father, right? That's why Pope Paul VI says, it is an intimate knowledge which fills him, right? It points to the heart. It is intimate. 
Then there's, there's something else. He says, it is an unceasing and total exchange. All I have is yours and all you have is mine. So these are, these are quotes from the gospel according to John, right? The last one is John 17, 10. And so all I have is yours and all you have is mine. So this deep, this intimate knowledge of Jesus, of being the beloved son, takes him to an unceasing, a total exchange. Okay, there's total sharing there. The father has given the son the power to judge, the power to dispose life. It is a mutual indwelling. I am in the Father and the Father in me. That's another quote from John 14, 10, right? So, Pope Paul VI points here to a mutual indwelling. So, the fact that the Father is in the Son and the Son is in the Father, right? And think here, the reference here to... Uh, to um, um, Jesus' uh, words, again, in, in the Gospel according to John, um, um, uh, to, to uh, his invitation to abide in him, to dwell in him, right? And, and he points out to that image of the vine and the branches. He says, remain in me and I in you. So that, that kind of relationship, right, it's, um, it's, it's an intimate relationship. And St. Paul used to say, um, um, I, don't I no longer live for myself, but Christ live in me. I live Christ's life. And St. Paul is known of, in his letters, of referring to the relationship with, with Christ, not just being with Christ, but being in Him, right? That, that's something that we, we, don't, we don't say about any other person. We don't say about personal relationships, right? Um, that that is that is that is something that 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 divine relationship right the mutual indwelling in return the son gives the father in immeasurable love so how does jesus respond to this joy to this um um to this consciousness intimate consciousness of being radically loved by the father and of the indwelling and of that presence that never leaves him alone so it is returning, right? I love the Father. I am doing exactly what the Father told me. He always does what is pleasing to his Father. It is his food and drink. That's another quote from John 8, 29 and 4, 34. So my food is to do the will of my Father, right? That's what Jesus says. Um, so think about, when you think about our behavior, as Christians, we, we instead of thinking it as, as um, kind of um, um, as precepts, as an external command, think of it as an internal response to what we have received. That is, that is how Jesus lived. Um, his, his, that, that, that is how Jesus lived. That was his behavior, was a, was a response to, to, to God's love. And, and this this deep relationship, right? So that's um, that's where 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 we we that's kind of where where we need to go to. So his availability goes even to the gift of his human life, right? So if you wonder if you wonder how was Jesus able to give up his life to suffer the most cruel tortures of 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 the cross, uh, how was Jesus able to do that? Well, because 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 that's that's where he lived that's where he's how that's because of his relationship with the father right so he perceived his life as a gift and 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 and, and gives this this in return his life his confidence goes even to the certitude of taking it up again the father loves me because i lay down my life in order to take it up again that's a quote from john 10:17 you can find all these references uh, at the end of the encyclical, right? They're all linked there. And you can take these and, and, and pray with them. If there's something that, that, that speaks to you, particularly to your heart, take them and, and pray with them. In this sense, he rejoices to go to the Father. So he, Jesus, especially now that we approach, um, we approach the Ascension, that's one of the themes of the Ascension, 
uh, rejoicing because he's going to the Father, right? So um, it is it is in reference to the ascension, but it's in reference also he speaks about this joy of going to the Father um, in regards to to his um, to his passion and his resurrection, which is which is kind of awkward to speak of of the cross as joy of going to the Father, but. But gee, that's 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 because that's the reverberation of of what Jesus lived interiorly of his interior joy. It's not like he did not experience the the he did not experience the pain. He did, but what helped him deeply was was this relationship with the Father. Right? Remember that before his passion, he prays in the garden, and 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 um, he he prays right, and he tells the other apostles. To pray and watch, because without without prayer, um, they would not be able to 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 withstand the trial that was going to come, right? And we know that they couldn't. We know that their their eyes fell asleep. We know that we know all that, and we know what happens with us. How hard it is to 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 pray and to 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 stay there. But you know what Jesus says and what Jesus taught us is out of what he was already doing. He was praying day and night. He was praying entire nights. And, and um, at the end of an exhausting day of apostolate, we know that from the Gospels. We know that he was rising up early in the morning to pray. You know, we, we, we know that, that that was his food, his his relationship, his food and his drink was was being with the Father and, and especially in prayer. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, for Jesus, it is not a question of passing aware of a passing awareness, right? Um, so that of the that joy of all this relationship with the Father is not the Jesus' joy is not just a passing awareness, right? That, that, that as it happens with us in the moment we're joyful, and then something happens, and and we're not, and you know, in Jesus, in Jesus, it was a radical, it was kind of a radical status. It was a status. Of, of mind, of heart. It is the reverberation in his human consciousness of the love that he has always known as God in the bosom of the Father. You loved me before the foundation of the world, he says in John 17, 24. That's his, his, uh, his, um, his last will, his prayer um, um, that, uh, that we have in the Gospel according to John, his, um, his prayer in the garden. So, it is a reverberation in his human consciousness of the love that he has always known as God in the bosom of the Father, right? So Jesus brings into, into humanity, um, into his humanity, but also our humanity, this, um, what he has always known, so to speak, as God is, and as being in the bosom of the Father from, the, from, from, from eternity. Here, the, there is an uncommunicable, uncommunicable relationship of love which is identified in his existence as the Son and which is the secret of the life of the Trinity. The Father is seen here as the one who gives himself to the Son without reserve and without ceasing in a burst of joyful generosity. And the Son is seen as he who gives himself in the same way to the Father in a burst of joyful gratitude in the Holy Spirit. So you see here an exchange that is the exchange proper to the persons of the Holy Trinity. And that is, um, Paul the Sixth, Pope Paul the Sixth describes it as a burst of joyful generosity of the Father and a burst of joyful gratitude of the Son in the Holy Spirit. So, so just, just take, um, I, I invite you to take these, these expressions with you, burst of joyful generosity. Burst of joyful gratitude. And just, just let these sink in. Um, I invite you to, in your, in your daily meditation, your daily contemplation, prayer, just let these words sink in and all they carry with them. And then I will read one more short paragraph. And the disciples and all those who believe in Christ are called to share this joy. So all this joy that, that we spoke about, what, what is really the secret of Jesus' joy, right? We are called to participate and to share this joy. Jesus wishes them, the disciples, 
to have in themselves his joy in its fullness. He says in, in, in John 17, 13, he says, I want you to have joy and joy to the full, right? That's his desire for us as disciples. I have made your name known to them, and I will continue to make it known, so that the love with, with which you love me may be in them, and so that I may be in them. That's a quote of John 17, 26, right? So notice here, I have made your name known to them, that's what Jesus says to the Father in prayer, and I will continue to make it known, so that the love with which you loved me may be in them right so it's 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 a transmission from the father to the son and through the son to us right that's what when jesus says to to um when philip asks jesus show us the father and and that will be enough and jesus and jesus jesus's response to that is like philip um who has seen me has seen the father right and what i i think in my part of a possible interpretation, my interpretation of that, when Jesus says, who has seen me, not just physically, but who has seen me deeply, intimately, interiorly, has seen already the face of the Father. So I am the face of the, like, I, I am, I am the, the, you can see the Father through me and in me, right? So that love of the Father, um, Jesus receives all this love, and, 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 and that burst of joyful gratitude goes towards the Father, but also towards us, His disciples. So He wants that, that love to pass into us, to come into us, right? That's why, um, right, that's why Jesus, after the resurrection, says to, to the apostles, As the Father sent me, so I send you. So it's not just sending them on a mission. That mission uh, on which Jesus is sending the apostles and every disciple, us included, and everyone until the end of the world, what is what the mission that he's entrusting us with is more is 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 again is not an external assignment, exterior um, assignment. It is actually it is something that is coming from deep within. It is a life. It is a true life. Right? It's not just do this, do that. Um, go and preach. It's not just that. It's transmitting a relationship with, with the Father and, and bringing people into that relationship. So the, the ultimate goal is, is, says Jesus, and so that I may be in them, right? Um, so Jesus just not, doesn't just want to be with us, to be there for us, right? Like a friend, like, you know, there's something, there's, there's something infinitely more about the relationship with God radically different that is not nothing that is is what like what we experience with any other human being but it is it is something that is proper to the divine life and to the divine um you know the 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 the, the grace of god and the work of god in us and through us right so you see here also the need for the sacraments right um right now we're we, we, we're going through this painful experience of not being able to, to celebrate together the sacraments. Priests are going through the painful experience of celebrating Mass privately and not being able to, 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 um, to give the sacraments. I mean, we do. We, give, we, we still administer um, confession and we administer in, in case of emergency the anointing of the sick and last rites. You know, and, and we're slowly resuming, you know, the sacraments of confirmation and reception into the Catholic Church and baptism, um, right, in these, the next two weeks. Um, but again, in a, in, a, in a private way, right, behind closed doors. And, and it's still not, not where we want to be, where we need to be, right? And you're experiencing the pain of not being able to receive the sacraments. We know that the, the sacraments... Um, are necessary because our life is is that is how God wants to touch us not just spiritually not just interiorly although now we have to rely exclusively on that um, and and but but the idea is that we return to that to that being one with and and of of, of Jesus being in us not just spiritually not just um, not just um, 
um, you know, uh, by desire, uh, communion by desire, but communion by, by sacram that is sacramental, right? That is physical also. Um, so so that, is, that is important, you know, and why, why is all this needed, right? Why can't we have church just, you know, church just on our own and, and be just disciples of Jesus? You know, we have the Bible and, and just stick to the Bible and be with the Bible and, you know, have our own church on our own. Why can't we do that? Well, part of that is that, is that you, you see how there, there, has to be, there has to be even a physical, concrete manifestation and transmission and, and contact, right? So Jesus wants to be in us. And, um, you know, and, and, and if you don't believe me, read John 6 when he says, um, uh, who does not eat my blood, my blood, and uh, who does not eat my flesh and drink my blood will not have life, right? That's what Jesus is saying. So though that's, that's the gospel, right? And um, um, we get it that right now we're in their special circumstances, but normally, um, that's where we're as Christians, as disciples of Jesus, we need to be, right? Um, and and God willing, we will be soon. We pray that we will soon be able to resume um, our normal sacramental life. So um, so just um, that's that's what I focused on today. Um, Jesus is interior joy, and that's how this joy has to um, is is uh, naturally. Um, naturally overflowing into the disciples and how we are called to share this joy, uh, this intimate, deep joy of Jesus. So tomorrow I'm going to continue reading about the joy of the kingdom of God and, um, and, and so probably end this, um, this third section. And then we will go in, in looking at the disciples. How did the disciples of Jesus live this joy starting with the saints? Um, there's so much to learn from the life of the saints, and we will learn in this uh, reading of, of um, 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 Gaudete in Domino um, on Christian joy. So if you have any questions, I'm going to look, look up to see if you have any questions. It's so good to see so many of you joining me and, uh, and, and drawing inspiration from this. Kathy says, burst, burst of joyful gratitude picturing the miracle of the sun as we celebrate Our Lady of Fatima. Right. Um, I invite you to search, to search this. If, you're, if you have never heard about the miracle of the sun at Fatima, um, that was a sign that Our Lady wanted to give um, um, that, was, um, uh, that everybody was, was available, believer or non-believer, to, to, to see. And... Um, and there, there are newspapers, uh, Portuguese new, newspapers from that time that have documented, and reporters um, that have documented this, this miracle of the sun um, that, is, um, that is quite, quite astounding. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's, that's the miracle. Uh, the, the deepest miracle is knowing that, that we are loved by God and, and, and we are saved by Him. And what a joyful, what a joyful perspective awaits us you know that 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 to me is is one of the greatest joys um you know and 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 that is the comfort in in the difficulties that we, we go through and we will go through and we went in the past through you know just just knowing that, that there's joy awaiting us and 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 that joy by the grace of god um we're able um sometimes to live it right here and right now so I'm going to stop here, and uh, I will see you tomorrow at noon and Friday. So I'm 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 doing these uh, these uh, noon reflections on Christian joy on Mondays, on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So that's that is my plan right now. So I'd like to conclude with Regina Celli, the prayer for the Easter season um, that we we recite at noon. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Queen of heaven, rejoice, alleluia, for he whom you did merit to bear, alleluia, has risen as he said, alleluia. Pray for us to God, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, alleluia, for the Lord is truly risen, alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
Grant, we beseech you, that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Riva, I like your comment. That is, that is the right attitude. God bless you, and see you tomorrow at noon.